Welcome to Day 6, Lesson 6, Your Pelvis and the Passage of Birth. In this audio, you will explore the hard bony structures of your pelvis. And I recommend that you do this lesson sitting in a firm chair so that you can use your hands to map out the landmarks as I guide you through them. You may want to Google an image of a pelvis so that you also have a visual representation as I guide you step by step. Nature has ensured that your baby is very well protected. The muscles of your belly protect your uterus. Your uterus and the amniotic fluid protect your baby. And your pelvis protects your uterus. So let's start by getting a visual image of your pelvis. To start off, think of a tube. Because any tube has an inlet, a midsection and an outlet, no matter how long or how big it is. A hole can be like a donut hole, a two-dimensional circle or a hole in the ground, but a tube has three dimensions. And your pelvis has three dimensions. Your pelvis has an inlet, or the top of the tube, and this is where your baby enters the pelvis. The inlet is made up of the hip bones on each side, your pubic bone in the front, and your sacrum at the back. You might want to place your hands on your hips now and just feel out the side, the front and the back. The hip bones on the side, your pubic bone in the front and your sacrum at the back. Before we go into a little bit more detail, exploring each of these bones and areas separately, and getting a mental image of both the inlet, the mid pelvis, and the outlet. With your hands on your hip bones, sweep them down the front of your body, then turning towards your midline to feel the pubic bone across the lower part of your belly, along the top of your pubic hair. The pubic bone is formed from two separate bones with a small piece of cartilage between them in the middle. In the last months of pregnancy, birth hormones soften this cartilage, allowing it to spread apart and create more space for your baby. The top of the pubic bone forms the inlet and the bottom part is part of the outlet, the front part of the outlet. Now you cannot measure or feel the inlets from the outside But you can measure and feel the outlet from the outside of your body. And that's exactly what you're about to do now. So place your thumb on top of your pubic bone, just where the pubic hair starts. And reach down with your index finger to your crotch. You'll find your pubic arch by sweeping the finger gently from side to side in the area just above your clitoris and you should feel an arch type shape called the pubic arch. Your thumb is placed at the front of the inlet and your index finger is at the front of the outlet. Gently squeeze the thumb and forefinger together and try and imagine the length of that space between your two fingers. The length from the top where your thumb is to the pubic arch is the length of your pelvic tube. This is the distance your baby will travel once it enters the top of the pelvic tube or the inlet. Take a moment to imagine that. Try and get an image in your mind of what that looks like. You may need to look at the image of the pelvis that you have in front of you, if you have one. And then go back to what you're feeling with your thumb and your forefinger. Imagining the distance your baby will travel once it enters the top. If it doesn't make sense yet, that's okay. Just keep going as we explore the different aspects and angles of your pelvis. And being able to look at the image and feel it it will become clearer. So now let's explore the back of your pelvic tube. Start again from the top of your hip blades 
and move your hands towards your back. Bring them to the center and run them down your spine until you feel the flat bone at the end of your spine shaped like an upside down triangle. Feel around to find the two bumps, slightly prominent, hard to find, but the area will be tender to the touch. These two bumps on the big hip bone slightly overlap the top corners of your sacrum. This overlay is not fixed or stuck. It's a sort of joint on each side of your sacrum as it meets each bump from both hip bones. Holding your fingers over those bumps, gently explore them with your fingertips, feeling how the sacrum connects with the blades of your hip bone and knowing that just like the pubic bone has a piece of cartilage that responds to the hormones of pregnancy and gives the pubic bone in the front the ability to soften and move and create space, so this area responds to birth hormones, increasing this joint's ability to slide the two parts over one another as your baby passes through, creating more space in the pelvic outlet. And now sliding your hands down to your coccyx or your tailbone, the tapered end of the triangular sacrum. Your tailbone is also attached to your sacrum with soft tissue. And because of this, it has the ability to move backwards. Positions that allow your coccyx to move are always preferable when you are giving birth. So standing, forward leaning, or being on your hands and knees Give your coccyx the ability to move back, creating more space as your baby's head descends. And now you're going to move your hands and discover your sitting bones, another way to create space in the bony pelvis. So sitting on that chair, slide your hands right under your buttocks and find your sitting bones, the prominent bones that are pushing down into the firmness of the chair. Take hold of the sitting bones with your fingertips and notice the position that these sitting bones are in when you're sitting with your feet and knees in line, your knees in line with the hips. Now keeping your hands on the sitting bones and with your feet still, just bring your knees together until they are touching. Notice how your sitting bones move outwards when you bring the knees together. If you didn't get it, bring your knees back to the original position in line with your hips, keeping your hands on your sitting bones. And just gently move the knees together and back out a few times, noticing the movement of the sitting bones outwards, creating space in the outlet when you bring the knees together. We'll take that one step further now, taking your knees out wide to the side. And notice that when you take the knees out wide to the side, your sitting bones come together even closer, narrowing the outlet. I encourage you to do this exercise several times on a firm chair. You might want to do it on your birthing ball. You might want to do it standing up, taking your feet out wide to the side, noticing how these movements create space in the outlet. Knowing how you can move your body will guide you during labor as you move intuitively into positions that create space for your baby to move down through your pelvis. In cultures and environments where women have the freedom to adopt positions that feel right intuitively, you will see that they generally go into forward leaning, squatting and standing positions Positions that facilitate this natural creation of space. I encourage you to use these exercises to get a good sense of what your pelvis looks and feels like and understand that the movement capability in your container exists in the front where the pubic bones succumb to the expansion and softening of the cartilage and in the back where the sacrum meets the bumps on each of the big hip bones. 
in the coccyx or tailbone, which has the ability to move backwards and create space, and in the sitting bones, which change shape and diameter according to your position. In other words, although it is a hard, bony structure, your pelvis, the birth container, is not rigid and fixed. It is designed to open. And once your baby moves out of the outlet, it enters the soft tissue of the birth canal, your vagina. When you're in labour, it is around this time that you will start feeling pressure as your baby's head descends and presses down on the nerves of the pelvic floor, the nerves around the anus and the rectum, giving you the exact same feeling of pressure that you need when you go to the toilet. You'll be learning breathing techniques to be guided to use this pressure to learn to breathe your baby out and to practice daily when you go to the toilet and feel that same pressure. This will help you to feel more comfortable with the feelings of pressure and to work instinctively with it. For now you have a clear image in your mind of your pelvic bowl and how it is perfectly designed to protect the soft structures held within it and how it creates a passage through which your baby will be born. In a moment I'm going to lead you through a guided visualization to practice softening and opening. If you are sitting in a chair, you might want to find a more comfortable place so that you can settle yourself into this gentle practice, however comfort guides you. Letting your eyes close and allowing yourself to become still, relaxed, and quiet. You may want to place your hands on your hip bones just as a gentle reminder as you bring your focus inwards with each in-breath letting go of any tension or resistance on the out-breath. Gently cradling your pelvis with your hands, feeling held and contained, and connecting to the feeling of your baby being held and contained within the pelvic bowl. knowing that your baby is held and protected. And with this deep knowing, bring your experience to the sensation of your face. Noticing how soft your face feels as it softens and settles. Just noticing how your face feels in this moment. And allowing your face to relax. Allowing your face to relax. Any tension in the forehead, releasing on the out breath. Relaxation of the cheeks, thinking down to your lips, gently relaxed, so soft, gently parted, tongue resting gently on the roof of your mouth, your jaw, gently relaxing, releasing. Every muscle, every fiber, every nerve, Surrounding your eyes, every muscle, every nerve, every fiber around the cheekbones. Soft, relaxed. And that same relaxation that you feel in the cheeks, moving down into the neck, down into the shoulders, noticing every part, how it feels. 
how gently relaxed it can feel. So easy, so effortless, just by focusing inward for a while. And tuning into your inner wisdom, acknowledging the deep connections within your body, seen and unseen, known and unknown. Deep connections that run deeper and deeper between your emotional and your physical self. Deep connections between thoughts and feelings. Deep connections between confidence and trust. Deep connections between autonomy and birth. Deep connections between birth and your baby. Deep connections between your face and your pelvis. Connections that mean as you gently and naturally relax the muscles of your face, you gently and naturally relax your pelvis. Gently and naturally relaxing the muscles of your pelvic floor. Gently and naturally softening your perineum. Because even without trying, that connection that connection between your face and your pelvis, that connection that works for you, for your birth, for your benefit, for your confidence and trust, gently softening, relaxing and releasing your pelvis just by relaxing your face. And now, feeling that inner wisdom that effortless connection between face and pelvis. That connection that can be used by you to your highest benefit. So whenever you relax your face, you can relax your pelvis. And allow that connection to grow gently and naturally without even trying. The effortless connection between face and pelvis. A connection that can be used by you to your highest benefit. So whenever you relax your face, you can relax your pelvis. Allow your pelvis to soften and release. Relaxing gently and naturally. Just as it will when you birth your baby. So take a moment now, notice with curiosity, with no effort at all, these natural internal connections, combining, working, gently relaxing, so naturally, so easily, softening, settling, relaxing and releasing. And each and every time you choose to practice this mindful relaxation, to find a moment to soften gently, deciding on certain times in the day, knowing the more regularly you do this, the quicker the connections will grow, the more gentle and natural they'll become, the more you'll feel yourself softening, settling and releasing. With no effort at all, these natural internal connections, connection between face and pelvis, allowing your pelvis to soften and release, relaxing gently and naturally, just as it will when you birth your baby. The effortless connection between face and pelvis. The connection that can be used by you to your highest benefit. Whenever you relax your face, you relax your pelvis. Now in your own time, start bringing your awareness back towards the here and now. Listening to the sounds around you, noticing not just your face and your pelvis, but your whole body from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Opening your eyes softly and gently. 
feeling confident in your own internal journey and your ability to gently soften and relax your pelvis when you softly and easily give birth to your baby.